It's like my front door of my house, the lock on it is my encryption. But when mm-hmm. I unlock it so that I can carry my groceries in the house and somebody runs in while I'm carrying my groceries in the house, they did not thwart my locking mechanism. No, they, they, s- they simply walked right in because it was not locked. <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax, HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to episode 343 of the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs, and joining me is Donna Grindle of Cardin. And today, we're going to be talking about encryption. <laughs> I know, one of our favorite topics, encryption. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to talk about uh the title is, you know, three ways encryption fails. And um honestly, we could probably do more than three. <laughs> I was trying to stick with, you know, narrowing it down. Yeah. Uh we could start with first of all the failure of people to understand how it works so that they understand how it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that is an overarching theme to today's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> discussion. It, it's like, oh yeah, I got encryption. I'm good. Um, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Let's review. Yeah, nah. yeah. But before we dive into that, I do want to remind everybody the privacy and security boot camp. Prosec. Yeah. Camp. Hoorah! How about this? Three and a half days of in person. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, when was the last time you saw people? <laughs> it's been a while. All I see is you. It's painful. I know. Can't count that as a person. <laughs> <laughs> September 12, 13, 14, and 15 in Louisville, Louisville. Kentucky. Louisville. Louisville. Yeah, Louisville. Working out. Louisville. Can't Louisville. say Louisville. Louisville. Uh, it, yeah. Louisville. <laughs> Louisville Slugger. <laughs> Louisville Slugger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the way it is. So, if you want to know more about that, go to the Prisec Bootcamp dot com. P R I S E C Bootcamp dot com. And yes. all the information will be there. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. We mm-hmm. got some. We got some really great stuff planned. We should. We we'll, we we'll, we'll probably by the time this comes out, we'll have a video talking about it on the Prisec Bootcamp dot com. I probably shouldn't say that all the information will be there because we're still building stuff <laughs> we're still getting people, yeah. you know, coming in and, and, uh, vendors and speakers and all that stuff. So check back often, but get in quickly. Yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to supersize what our boot camps have been, uh, taking it to the next level, brother. Mm-hmm. Let's go big or go home. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Hopefully we won't have to go home. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going big. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All righty. So that brings us to our HIPAA Say What segment. And this one is interesting. And, of course, it happened in Georgia. <laughs> of course it did. It's, it's one that's there, and I, I keep forgetting to include it because I don't know why. Well, you know, it's one of those things when you're skimming the headlines, which people often do, and I I do that too, but you're skimming the headlines and you see ex-hospital worker arrested in SGMC data breach. You're like, what? You didn't didn't play the best part of HIPAA Say What? Well, hold on. Go ahead. Do it. HIPAA. Say what? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I just, I feel like I need that. I don't know why. It's wrong in so many ways, but then again, not. <laughs> All right. Back to the problem at hand. <laughs> the arrested individual in Valdosta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. We'll spend time there. in Valdosta. <laughs> yeah. I go, I've been to Valdosta a time or three. Yeah. There, there's some interesting pieces in this article, but yes. I'll let you give the story and then we'll talk about the story underneath the story. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, I mean, the article is, uh, like I said, it's it's been around for a couple of weeks, uh, but I love how they say they actually brought out the big guns. The president and CEO meets with reporters 
to tell them about the South Georgia Medical Center, a worker, quote unquote, left employment (laughs) November 11th. And on November 12th, they don't go into the deets, but security software put out an alert that there had been an unauthorized download of data by an employee. Hmm. Basically, on the way out that dough, (laughs) they downloaded a bunch of data and popped it on a USB stick and walked out with it. So here's a question for the listeners, though. How many of you have a way of knowing that would even happen on your network? It's much less within 24 hours. Yes. You know, we we just had Ray Ribble on with Sphere. Their application is one that works that way, Mm -hmm. depending on, you know, the alerts and those kind of things. Because it looks like they didn't come in after the fact. They did it on their way out the door before they were leaving the employment. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But it it looks like that they just got uh, name, date of birth, test results. Hmm. I know. There was no financial data, no social security, or no medical records, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Test results <laughs> are medical records. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't I can't let that go by. That's I'm like, I couldn't pass that sentence. I had to keep reading it over and over. So they, they didn't like erase them or damage the integrity. They just downloaded their own copy. <laughs> Yeah, I like when it says the you know they were just downloaded. The hospital didn't lose any information, right? I'm they like, what? Well, lost te- a copy of it. Yeah, technically <laughs> you lost some information. You just didn't yeah. have any it's, any destroyed. <laughs> yeah, it's not all gone. There's just an extra <laughs> copy wandering around somewhere. <laughs> it just cloned itself. <laughs> yeah. and the employee at the heart of the investigation had legitimate access to the files. So uh-huh. here you go. This is an important point. They had legitimate access until the point they left their employment. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have a reason, though, to download to a USB stick as part of their TPO. Mm -hmm. Right? So they're not saying what exactly was going on. But the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office, they got involved and they are providing technical assistance in studying the files to see what was going on. So there's a lot of gray areas here, but the net of it is a 43-year-old female former SGMC employee is charged with felony computer theft and felony computer invasion of privacy. Those two together. They're not saying a motive. It it is unknown. But these are the felonies. This doesn't count if they try to turn it over to the Department of Justice Mm -hmm. and make a federal case out of it. Mm -hmm. I always love it. (laughs) They they don't even realize that that's there, too. So one of the things we try to make sure people understand is there are criminal penalties for malicious intent. So, anyhow, they have a lot of security in place. Like I said, I know, I mean, it's not a slack place. The fact that they caught it within 24 hours tells you a lot right there. Because Mm -hmm. we both know (laughs) that this has probably occurred in places that still don't know it happened a couple of years ago. Oh, and and we'll never know what happened. Yeah, until something something comes to bite them. Mm Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, this these are the same people that's, you know, I, I don't need this because I've never had a security incident. <laughs> really? You have no way of knowing you've ever had a security incident. So how are you even able to say that? <laughs> Indeed. So when Ray hears this episode, he'll be proud that we are referencing that discussion. But this is why we want this is real world in the news. You can have a link to it. Why you need to do these audits. And mm-hmm. it's not getting better. It's going to get worse. I, I do like the, the, the vice president of <laughs> marketing and public affairs. <laughs> I thought it was kind of interesting that it's yeah. both. But anyway. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like, okay, you're, the person that's doing public affairs is also marketing fluff kind of guy. <laughs> well, they 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 do kind of live in the same <laughs> yeah, wheelhouse, yeah. I guess. I thought that was interesting. It really has no bearing on the story. I just thought it was funny. But one thing that he did say is no one has access to all of the hospital files. It's on a need-to-know basis, which, what do we call that in our world? Mm. Minimum necessary. <laughs> Well, yeah, minimum necessary. And how many admins do you think there are? <laughs> I'm just saying, is it possible <laughs> there are system admins that actually do have access to everything? Or system admins that no longer work there <laughs> still have access to everything. So that's a pretty yeah. bold statement. Not that it's impossible for it to be true but, but from a marketing and public fair standpoint that's a great statement <laughs> <laughs> excellent point my man excellent point mm -hmm. so there in uh, is is a good segue to <laughs> the topic of the day yeah yeah the three ways encryption fails you before as as one of my Dear mentors taught me to say, before your alligator mouth overloads your hummingbird arse, <laughs> <laughs> be careful of what you say. Uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, I don't know. Not everybody probably has seen you in person, but a hummingbird arse, you have not. No. <laughs> no, no you know, it. it is a... Catchphrase, we will say. Uh, we'll go with that. <laughs> nope, there's nothing. Uh, that whole vision, though, it does make sense. It does. Yeah. I've been known to do that before. <laughs> uh, you've been known to do it to me. <laughs> Most He's days. Ta he taught me a lot of phrases like, up an unsanitary tributary without adequate means of propulsion. Oh, that guy. that guy. That guy. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> he taught me good stuff. <laughs> he taught me other things, but, you know, the ones that you share the most are the fun ones. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this gets back to the number of times that we have people who are like, it's encrypted, so we don't have to worry. Okay. How often... Do, do you hear somebody, you know, in general, that's what they're saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, quite frequently. It, yeah. And it makes your head want to spin, uh, like completely around. This It's almost as bad as me hearing somebody say, I have a Mac. I'm, I don't have anything to worry about. Yeah. Or <laughs> I'm on Linux. It's not a big deal. We don't have to worry about those things. You know, yeah. even recently there's been... More and more cases of that. It's the same concept. There's no, we don't have to worry. Yeah. <laughs> I had a phone call today. A small company had like three computers. And, and the lady said, this is the third time we've been hacked. <laughs> and I'm like, seriously? Wait, she goes, yeah. We got rid of all of our Windows machines and went to Mac because <laughs> we kept getting hacked. And we still got hacked. And I'm like, going to Mac is not a... <laughs> No, nah. he's like that, what? That that's that's not the way you no. Mm -mm. Yeah, but uh, anyway, it was an interesting conversation. But I just thought it was funny that that's the response. <laughs> you know, let's let's not look at security software and everything that goes around cybersecurity. Let's just change the operating system. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? Is somebody told them that? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Somebody, it. somebody at a dinner party. <laughs> told them somebody somewhere. Yep. All you got to do is go to a Mac. That wouldn't happen. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they said almost that. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what you go to. If you do not secure it, it is not secure. <laughs> <laughs> Statement of the year. If I know. you do not secure it, it is not it's secure. not secure. <laughs> right. It is no default at all and you have to make sure it stays that way or it will not stay that way <laughs> all right so in in the top 10 countdown kind of way 
let's just discuss the what a few of the ways that we hear people misunderstand. We'll call it. Okay, number three. Mm. Encrypting, Encrypting hard drives. Hard drives. Yeah, you say it. <laughs> okay, I'll say it. <laughs> Encrypting hard drives is not a guarantee that it's going to stop an intruder from accessing your data. True or false, Donna? True or false? Well, that, that, <laughs> that is true, and it is, you know, many people think that that is not the case. I mean, how many times have we seen it? We just were, like, a, a while back reviewing a, um, what was it? There was a case where they were like, the it was on an encrypted system that was then attacked with a ransomware attack. All you've mm-hmm. got is encrypted encryption. <laughs> <laughs> it's double encrypted. It's yeah, triple maybe. Encrypted. Who knows? But <laughs> it, it matters not. Uh, and often, you know, if the server, if you're worried about encrypting a server, for example, perfect mm-hmm. example, most people's servers now are stored in data centers. They're not stored in an office. Right. And the ones that are stored in an office, you do need to worry about encrypting the hard drive, but not to prevent an intruder from accessing the data externally. Mm-hmm. Basically, if you're working, and I see that all the time, a checklist, somebody going through a checklist, Ooh, an MSP mm-hmm. that's gotten a checklist. And they go through the checklist, and it says you should have your hard drive encrypted. Do you have your hard drive encrypted? Well, the hard drive's in the data center. We don't. Well, there's your problem right there. There, you're you're violating HIPAA. <laughs> there's no way you can be HIPAA compliant. It's impossible. <laughs> 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 Please tell everybody you're joking because I will see I that. Am. Okay. Uh, we know so, that we have seen that and that is absolutely false. Yes, it is false. <laughs> that is being misinformed. Uh, yeah. Okay. Get me started. I know. I know. That's why I did it because I could watch your eyes just flutter as they were mm, rolling around in started your head. twitch over here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing is that if you're, you know, these data centers, if you've never visited one, I highly recommend that you at least look up some of the list of security that's in place. But yeah. actually going to them is impressive if it's a good one. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got all these layers of security around the building. There's cameras monitoring how many blades of grass are moving <laughs> in case the wind has changed. And Mm -hmm. then at the doorway, you get, you know, you're able to go in just far enough to get heat and air before they're talking to you. And Mm -hmm. you get pictures made and that goes on a sticker. And and then you walk in the room and there's layers after layers to get into where the computers are. There's a cage around the computers. You have to have a rectal scan. Yeah. Some of them do. I didn't say retinal. (laughs) <laughs> uh, come on I was going to go with it and let us go down that path <laughs> okay I'm a little yeah. punchy today we're trying this new recording schedule doing it on Monday afternoons is maybe a bad idea <laughs> anyway right. if you're working Back. a checklist and it tells you you have to have that you are managing a checklist not managing risk this is true so what Two things do having an encrypted hard drive help you with the most? Uh, number one would be if the drive is lost or stolen. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that, that, dri- that, that's drive the being most used. Yeah. Drive being it could be the the actual device itself, but it contains the drive. But yes. Right. <laughs> right. Drive's lost or stolen, or if you're ready to you know decommission it. And somebody, not that anybody would ever do this, but if somebody decided to just take it straight to Goodwill and donate it, <laughs> it might help. Yeah. yeah. It would fall under the same area as if it were stolen. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the bottom line is, if you are using the system with the encrypted drive, 
and an attacker is using the system with you, mm -hmm. then it's not encrypted. Nope. No, It'd because be like, you're using it. It's like my front door of my house, the lock on it is my encryption. But when mm -hmm. I unlock it so that I can carry my groceries in the house and somebody runs in while I'm carrying my groceries in the house, they did not thwart my locking mechanism. No, they, they, did not. they simply walked right in because it was not locked. <laughs> they, they did not thwart it. No, they, they did, did not. not. <laughs> and they also grabbed my groceries and went out with it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still trying to figure out if, if the bag person bagging them is the one that messed up. No. Yeah, they exfiltrated <laughs> my groceries. There you go. That's exactly the way it happens. <laughs> oh, all right. So number two. Number two, encrypted communications are not a guarantee. To stop an intruder from accessing your data. <laughs> you getting a pattern here? Mm-hmm. We hear this one all the time. I know one of your favorite things to hear is we don't have to worry because our email is TLS. Yeah. We don't have to worry because everything we do is in the cloud and it's HTTPS. Mm -hmm. Yep. In the meantime, they've got printers and other devices that they're accessing wide open with default passwords all over their network. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are so many variables and there are so many ways that HTTPS can be spoofed and faked. In fact, if you're having, you know, I love the ones where they say, I always make sure there's a little lock on there. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? When the criminals make a website, they make sure there's a little lock on there. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. They do that. Yeah. Yeah. They make sure there's a lock on there because they know you like to have the lock there. Mm -hmm. So well, they want to make sure. That, with them they want to make secure. sure that they're collection of stolen money is protected. <laughs> so what you have to remember is that, you know, we are granted the move where, you know, when Google started reducing your search engine results, if you weren't, if you didn't have HTTPS, which mm -hmm. is hypertext transport protocol across SSL. HT, isn't that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. All that means is we are publishing a document that says we will secure our conversation between me and you. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's already involved on either end of that conversation, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. There's things called man in the middle attacks and all kinds of other things. So one cannot assume that it's the same thing. Oh, it's encrypted. We don't have to worry. Well, I also love the one since we're talking about HTTPS, <laughs> they'll say I have HTTPS, but when you look at their website, there's no security actually protecting the site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're secure communications, but there's nothing keeping people out of the site. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. There's <laughs> wide open logins with default passwords or no serious password security, which we'll get to in just a minute. <laughs> yeah. But at least it's a secure communication. Yeah. <laughs> so there it is. But now we get to number one. All right. Number one. Now what prompted this. me to make this episode. I'm sure. Encrypted email is not a guarantee. This is going to stop an intruder from accessing your emails. Oh, that hurts me. So this week, for the 40,000th time mm -hmm. in the last two years, I'm sure, I had to yet again explain that just because you have encrypted email, it does not mean that you can just willy-nilly throw PHI around in there and secure information in there and think that everything's okay. It does not. It is the number one most terrifying way people misunderstand how encryption works. Mm -hmm. It does not. It, uh, no. No. It, if I am in the email account because you've let me into the email account, just like on the hard drive, 
I can still get to it. And my communications are secured, just like we just talked about. Just because they're secured doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. Well, I also have seen more than one time somebody says, I pay for email encryption. And sure enough, they are accurate. Then I say, (laughs) what do you do to invoke your encryption? And they go, huh? Yeah, (laughs) it it just does it, doesn't it? (laughs) Yeah, it just worked, right? And I'm like, "Mm, no, no, it doesn't just work. I mean, you you either have it set to look for certain identifiers or you have it set manually, but it's not encrypting every single email message, most likely. (laughs) Yeah, that's like the you know another one of your favorites. I'm sure is I have an iPhone, so it's encrypted. (laughs) Oh, but you use one, two, three, four. Or no or password. They, well, they'll say I've got encryption on my iPhone, so anything I email from my iPhone is encrypted. I love that one, too. <laughs> That's right. Anything I send you is encrypted. Yeah. <laughs> I had a doctor tell me that if their email is secure and my email is secure, both with a password, then we can send things to each other and it will be secure. Mm, sounds logical. Just doesn't work that yeah. way. I was like, okay, how about... I go do your knee surgery. (laughs) (laughs) You handle the cybersecurity. Anyways, so I had that conversation. And then, like, the same day that I was having to type up that, you know, same story, different verse. (laughs) I feel like Henry VIII, I am, I am. (laughs) (laughs) Then let's see. You know, another action by a state attorney general dealing with a healthcare data breach. So this is New York, $600,000 agreement with IMED after a 2020 data breach. Pretty interesting that it's like right at a year after the data breach and they're already settling $600,000. Mm-hmm. And um, that data breach had to do with email, David. It had to do with email, David. <laughs> David. But they had encryption. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, I'm sure they did because the it, they're not, they don't even have to mention that in the discussion of what happened because it didn't matter. <laughs> well, is there not. So here was uh, under the findings of this case, I love this on or about because lawyers are writing it. And, and by the way, this is right out of the legal document. So if it doesn't match some article, it, yeah. I just pulled it out of the legal document. On or about June 24th, 2020, unknown attackers or attacker gained access to an IMED email account used by some IMED clients to provide sensitive consumer data in connection with vision benefits, enrollment, and coverage when the attacker entered login credentials via a web browser and mail client. That's a lot of words to say they were able to log into your email. Mm -hmm. And it had a bunch of stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So then it goes on to say, the intrusion, which lasted approximately a week. That's a long time in email. That's a million years in IT. (laughs) Yeah. They can, in a matter of seconds, at, you know, pull everything out of the account. But they were able to, they were granted access to and the ability to view emails and attachments dating back six years prior to the attack. In total, information for approximately 2.1 million individuals was exposed. 2.1 million individuals' information in an email account, David. Mm. You know why? Because people use their flipping email accounts as a online storage department. <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it in an email. Yeah. Mm. So from June 24th through July 1st, 2020, the attacker accessed the email account from a number of IP addresses some of which were outside of the United States. Imagine that. <gasps> Shocking. Let me tell you this little secret. 
I can make mine look like it's outside the United States, too. <laughs> I know. And I can be outside the United States and make it look like it's inside the United States. Yeah. So, you know, the whole yeah. where was the IP address, nah, not really much of a factor. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the same kind of thing. So, on July 1st, though, the attacker, because, see, they'd had it for a week. They'd done everything they wanted to do at that point. Time to nuke it. Now, it was, they said, well, let's see if we can do the next step and get away with it. They sent approximately 2,000 phishing emails <laughs> to IMED clients. So the people in the email account, you're also giving up the contact information to them, not just mm -hmm. their data that's stored in there, but the ability to pretend that I am, you uh, You know, that you're talking to me, mm -hmm. they get, and they steal them all to sell them out on the dark web. You know, you're in another data breach. Yeah. So this is when you get an email from Donna and you're like, this looks weird, but it comes <laughs> from Donna. Yeah, it, it's fine. It should be safe. It came from IMED. <laughs> they wouldn't give my information away. And basically what it was is a credential harvesting. So the, mm -hmm. e the phishing email comes out and tries to get people to log in so I can steal their credentials. Later the same day. <laughs> da, da, da. And, and, and when I read this, I, I, let me see what you think when you hear this part. Okay. IMED's IT department observed the transmission of these phishing emails from the email account and received inquiries from clients about the suspicious emails. Okay. Do you think it occurred in that order? Uh, <laughs> no, I do not think it occurred in that <laughs> order. I am absolutely 99% positive. It did not incur in that order. The clients were saying, we're getting these suspicious emails. And after about the third one, they're like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> There's and then, a problem somewhere. <laughs> and then everybody started freaking out. Mm -hmm. They blocked the account. They shut it all down. They bring in stuff. They get the forensics. All this stuff goes on. Mm -hmm. And we could go through this. We've been through this before. We know. What happened at that point? We're aware. Yep. That's when you get out your instant response plan. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yep. And hopefully they have one. But then the forensics happen, the notifications happen, blah, blah, blah. And then we get into the finding section. The investigation identified the following areas where IMED's practices did not meet the requirements. And note, this is not HIPAA. This is general business law, section 899-BB, to protect customer personal information. This mm. is state law. Mm -hmm. They never even brought up HIPAA up in here. They brought up multiple state laws, however, that were being violated. So for all those people that say HIPAA doesn't apply to me, <laughs> heads up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and and so then they go through a whole list of uh, of you know the things that were wrong. These were their failures. Number one, David. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just laughing at the footnote. That's <laughs> <laughs> <know>, right. <laughs> so number one, authentication. MFA, multi factor authentication, that is. <laughs> no. MFA. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But uh, they didn't require on an email account loaded with over a million client records information about them. But I do like how it no. said that I met, I met was aware of the importance of MFA to reasonable data protections, having required MFA for years before the attack. For users to access IMED's VPN. Footnote yeah. number two. IMED had begun to roll out MFA, which apparently it knew for years was important, to email accounts before the attack occurred. However, it failed to apply MFA to the enrollment account in the time to prevent the attack. <laughs> IMED completed the rollout of MFA to all email accounts by September. Yeah. So, yeah. It's yeah. like... Yeah, you know, how many and, times and, you had those projects that you know you started on it? Somebody complained about it. Oh, this 
MFA is, it's inconvenient. It's putting, you know, too much stress on everybody to put in a code. Oh. <laughs> well, and clearly this is like the enrollment account is used by multiple people. <laughs> yeah. So they were putting that off rather than deal with it. And by the way, there are a lot of ways to deal with that. Note to uh, yeah. self. There yeah. are many, many ways to deal with that. So don't tell me we share it so we can't put MFA on it. Mm, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. <laughs> and then, then they add to that item number two, yeah. the passwords on the email accounts, the rules. Mm. So we got no MFA and. <laughs> In the it, bare minimum. The bare minimum of only eight characters. <laughs> and no complexity. None. Like, like if that would matter on an eight character one. You know I, mean? I, I know. It's, it doesn't but, matter. You know, again, it's like something probably just wouldn't allow them to not have a password. So they just, okay, what's the least we can get by with? Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's been going on for six years. Six yeah. years. Yeah. Right. So since 2014, because this happened in 2020, mm -hmm. a lot of things were blinking red <laughs> about security and email <laughs> over that six-year period. Mm -hmm. And to make it even worse, you know, they could have said, you know, two failed attempts and we're going to lock the account. No, six. Six. <laughs> God almighty. <laughs> six. <laughs> And just give us 15 minutes and you can try again. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, it's just a pause. Six. Yeah. I, I don't even allow that many tries on our website, which people shouldn't even be, you know, no. There's nothing. Yeah, uh -uh. <sighs> and it keeps getting worse. Because <laughs> it goes on and on. There was no real logging in place. They had the cheapest version of the 365 suite that didn't have the logging and uh, they never purged or archived anything. They kept that thing loaded up because somebody might need it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they go through all of the technical stuff, but then they add in for all of you people who think, ah, oh, HIPAA doesn't apply. I don't have to worry about it. You know, I, I am in healthcare, but not a covered entity or a business associate. Heads up again on the state law thing, because here you go. They point out one other cute little thing about the privacy policy on the website. The privacy policy says the security of your personal information is important to us. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. We follow generally accepted industry standards to protect the personal information submitted to us. <coughs> really? And, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I don't think either of the things that we, any of the things we've discussed so far are generally accepted standards, maybe <laughs> minimally standards. They're minimal standards and to guard that information against loss, misuse or alteration. <laughs> okay. Here you go. It, the, the best part is yet to come. When you enter personal information on our site, we encrypt transmissions involving such information using secure protocols. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like we just, haven't we just covered all of that. So there's there's no mention of encryption of the email account itself. You know why? Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> It, yeah. it just really wouldn't matter if it was there or not. But here's the thing. If you had went to these people before this incident and asked, how's your security? It oh, would. Great. Oh, it's top notch. We never have any issues at we take all. Everything. Privacy yeah, and security. Take, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I know. It's like, this is my point that, you know, it's hard to make until something bad happens is that you don't know what you don't know. And you don't know how bad things are until something happens. And it blows my mind how many people, especially private practice. And you know, I talked to a, a private practice person last week, third generation doctor's office. The grandfather built it, passed it to the, his son, who's passed it to his. I mean, what a legacy. 
right. then when you say, what are you doing to protect this? And the only answer you get is, well, we replace the computers every five years to make sure that, you know, they don't get old and outdated. Okay, but what are you talking about? This has nothing to do with security. You can't even have a security conversation with people because they because when you ask, they give you these answers. They're like, we've never had a problem. <laughs> well, you know that, you know what? Your grandfather didn't have a problem because your grandfather didn't have computers. <laughs> your father got computers and that's all you needed to do was to replace them from time to time. Mm -hmm. But your father didn't have the internet. <laughs> that's right. Okay. So just like your grandfather didn't have to worry about replacing the computers, your father didn't have to worry about the fact that your computer in South Carolina is connected to computers in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. You know, on the other side of the world. You know, it's it's like there's a reason you don't practice medicine the same way too. Yeah, not that it's a good or bad thing. It's not great that you have to secure things. I'm not mm -hmm. happy about it. I know that these people are victims, but they were victims that weren't trying to prevent themselves from being victims. You know, that's kind of like walking down the street in in the any town. Waving around a stack of hundred dollar bills, like oh, I got so much cash on me, and I got all these credit cards, and I don't need to put them away. I could just walk down the street, and no one's gonna bother me. Yeah. Would you do that in Lancaster? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do it anywhere. No, nah. but you know you wouldn't what? Do if that I... in your own house because your wife would see them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but if I walk down the street twice, and it never happened. I would tell people, you know what? It's completely safe. You can do that. Yep. Because you'll never, you'll never have a problem. <laughs> yep. Yep. That makes sense. That makes sense. But you know, it's it's one of those things too, though. We're we talk about this a lot. We're dealing with things people don't understand, and it's not something that's readily in your face until something happens. Like, for example, you start getting your clients emailing you, going, "What is this crazy email I'm getting?" After the mm -hmm. third or fourth client who says, what is this crazy email? You finally go, wait a minute, something's not right. That's when things come out. I, I really wonder if none of these emails went to these other IMED clients, I wonder if they'd still today not know what had happened. Or how long it would have taken right. for, for somebody to say something. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, know, I know of cases where this happened, not necessarily on that scale, but it did happen, and hundreds instead of thousands of emails went out. And someone called and said, hey, you're sending phishing email. And they said, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because there's, yeah. you know, you know what happens is when they take it over, they hide your sent email. They delete it as soon as it's sent. So if you look in your sent email and it's not there. That is not proof that you didn't send it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the thing we're trying to get at here is we know about assume. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, and, and with the analogies we always try to use, you know, you get a brand new car and people say, you need to change the oil. You need to have it serviced every so many miles. But you know what? I've been driving this car for two and a half years, and I have never done it. It is fine. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, inside your vehicle, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> There's raw spots everywhere where pieces have been rubbing against each other. They're about to blow up, and you don't know when that's going to happen. So well, I read it on the internet that you can go to... <laughs> <laughs> I know. I read that you never have to deal with transmission fluid or any of that stuff as long as it's driving. As long as it's a Tesla, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the same thing. I've had this car forever. I've never done anything with it. It can't be forever then. <laughs> you know, the ones that you take care of and are designed to last for a long time, they will. Mm -hmm. But it's just like it used to be. Now... Your computers need to be taken care of. And do not assume 
that just because encryption is involved anywhere in the in the mix, that it it will actually take care of things. Because in that case and many others, encryption did nothing. Mm-hmm. So there you go, David. Info. Good rant. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got a little bit of fun out of that one. I know. All right, folks. Thanks. That is our show for today. And uh, maybe you want to go check out what your encryption is like. <laughs> Ask more questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for vis- thanks for visiting. <laughs> thanks for visiting our show today. <laughs> we hope to see you back next week when you can visit again. <laughs> Remember for, for Don and myself, if it's not about compliance is about patient care you've been listening to the help me with hipaa podcast hosted by donna grendel and david sims the show created to help you with hipaa for more information or to ask us a question visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com neither donna grendel or david sims are attorneys and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance the information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.